Yes, everything is there. Yeah, everyone, I can see quite a number of you guys uh, streaming in. Hey, Juan. Hey, Lani. Hey, a lot of familiar names. A lot of familiar names, right? We got, oh, we got Carly. You said we got Desmond. We got now Desmond here. Nice to see you guys. Hey, Gary. Nice to see you tuning in too. Right. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. Everyone's coming in nice and early. That's great. That's great. Hey, Andrew. Nice to see you. Right. Um, so, guys, there is a chat panel here. I just sent a message to everyone. Right. So, good. Um, that is a place where we can send our messages. Right. If you can, right. Can you just uh, see if it works for you guys? Maybe you can uh, tell me where you guys are tuning in from, which country you guys are tuning in from. Right. Um, you, you can select the part where you know it's sending to everyone as a drop down, right? And let's just see if it if it works, okay? Right, we got quite a number of people here today. That's great, man. And thank you all for tuning in nice and early. Okay, I haven't seen any messages come through yet, so I'm slightly worried that you guys can't hear me or something. Can everyone hear me clearly? Yeah, the microphone. Yeah, can everyone hear me clearly? I see a lot of people raising their hands, but are you able to see the part where it's... Uh, oh, chat is... What? Chat is disabled. I <laughs> I can see the Q&A. All right, no one, no one was sending anything in the chat. Uh, how, how, how do I, I... How do I enable chat, right? Oh yeah, I, I I can hear you guys. I can see uh, your messages. I mean, the, the only the only difference is that um is that you won't be able to see each other's messages, but I can see your messages, which which is the most important, right? I, I just kind of wish that um the chat was working today. I guess uh admin forgot to enable the chat. Enable the chat. Just let me see. Nope, I don't see any any option here to enable the chat anywhere. But it's cool. It's cool. Oh, uh, anyone can chat with everyone. Oh, can you can you guys see if the chat works now? Oh, hey, hey, hey. yeah, it's working. We got it working. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> I learned something new every day. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Right? Yeah, it's not. It's it's much better. Everyone's typing in here. I can see everyone's messages. Right. Hey, 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 Jersey. Hey, hey, Rahul. Right. Yeah. Hello to everyone, man. Um, all right. Yes. Some of you guys were asking about the trade manager EA that um, I was supposed to um, uh, send to you guys after sending in the review. I will get to it. Right. Um, a reason for my absence is because I was down with COVID actually just last week on Tuesday. So today is the, today is the seventh day. Right, my my throat, my my whole nose is uh it's not really completely cured yet. So, what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a short introduction. I'll be passing the uh time on to my good friend. His name is Jin Dao, right? And he'll be taking you through today's webinar. Uh, more because uh he will you'll see more of him uh in future sessions, especially in the live trading sessions, right? But for today, um, it's a little bit hard for me to do the webinar because I can't hear myself. And every few sentences, I feel like my throat might start coughing any second. Um, oh, Desmond asking if uh, about Tiger Brokers. Uh, they're, they're not really rivals to Tick Mill. Tiger Brokers are more, um, they're, they're more focused on stocks. Yeah, they're, they're more focused on stocks. They're more focused on shares. So Tick Mill is more focused on CFDs. So they're, they're uh, not really uh, competitors in any sense. Hey, Kikin Numuzi from South Africa. All right. Anyway, anyway, guys, let me let me begin today's webinar. All right. I, I do want to share, uh, let you guys know that we have an, another screen that's open here by the side, just monitoring your questions coming through and monitoring your chat. So if you if you have the chance, just send your messages through, okay? You know, uh, Jean will be looking at them and uh, answering them as soon as you can. All right. First and most important, I need to cover for today is that disclaimer, remember everything in this webinar is educational in nature. 
So nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice. Do your own due diligence before you guys trade. Okay. Now, uh, for today's topic, right? Uh, introducing your host for today first for those of you those of you who are here for the first time, my name is Desmond Leong, right? I usually run the webinars uh, every week uh, for TickMill, right? I also provide all the analysis that you see on their, on their blog. And soon, right, within the next two weeks at least, we'll be launching the VIP room uh, for TickMill clients. Exciting thing to look forward to, okay? So stay tuned to our next two webinars. We should be able to launch it pretty soon. I heard the marketing team, it, they're almost done with the landing page. So once that is done, it'll be a really great an exciting time where we're going to launch it to everyone. Um, a few important things that I'll share with you today, right? Top price action setups is going to be covered by Jin uh, in a bit, right? Um, over here um, at Everest Fortune Group, right? We have a special partnership with Tickmill where we're bringing you guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the stuff that will take your trading to a next level. So it's not the usual stuff that you find on Baby Pips or Forex Factory, right? It's a little bit more advanced stuff, right? So, um, this is, uh, and for those of you guys who know, this is me, right, Desmond Leong. Uh, your speaker later will be Jin Dao. I'll be introducing him in a minute, right? Um, take your chance, right? Take it as a guest appearance from him, but take your chance to ask him as many questions as you can, right? Because he's an amazing trader, has managed more than 20 mil before, right? Uh, he has leave and brief trading, and the way he uses price action is very different from what normal, you know, other traders uh rather public uses it, right? He, he has a good combination of fundamentals with technicals, but from a guy who has uh, done, done it, you know, traded uh, very successfully for multiple years, right? I want you guys to take the chance, right? To really uh, ask him questions to get into his thought process on how he uses price action. And later towards the end of the webinar, if there's a little bit of time, right, he'll be doing a live market analysis session. He'll be taking some requests, showing you some of the nice setups and breaking it down to you, the thought process on how he arrives at these setups. Okay. Now, before I let you guys go, I just need to point you to a few important pages, right? One is tickmill.com, right? You need to head to client tools and webinars. This is a place where you can sign up for our upcoming webinars, right? So if you scroll down here, I think we have a live trading um, session, right? Live trading session uh, coming in. Nope, not this one. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, it's over here, 25th July next week. Yeah, go sign up for this webinar. I'm gonna send it in the link for you guys, right? Go, go sign up for this webinar. Okay, um, this will be a live trading session, right? Uh, pretty fun. Actually, it's a trading, um, uh, it's a strategy clinic, right? So this is a pretty fun session where you can share with me your trading strategies and I'll be able to answer them, right? So it's a fun time where, you know, I get to diagnose a trading strategy for you. So go sign up for it if you haven't. And the last link that I want to send to you guys is, of course, for those of you who might miss have missed the previous webinars. <coughs> Sorry. This is the link that you want to go to. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in here for you. Okay, all the previous webinars we did. So sometimes talking about support resistance or trade managements or, uh, you know, you might not, um, uh, you might have missed out some part. Tune into this past webinars is a great place to catch up all the past uh, sessions that we are, we've covered, okay? Now, guys, um, without further ado, let me introduce you to Jin. Right, he'll be taking over today's session while I recover from uh, the side effects of COVID, right? Uh, granted, just to clear things up, I am recovered. This is day seven. But it's more of the toll that is taken on me. That is just taking me a little bit longer to recover from the, all, the, all the nasal effects that it's given me. All right. Um, over to you, Jin. Okay. Right. Everything is Hello. How's everyone doing? Can you, if you can hear me nice and loud, give me a big thumbs up or say hi in the chat. Good stuff. Hey, Gary. Hey, Tayfun. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, everyone. Good stuff. All right. So, as Desmond was saying, you know, he's down, he's recovering from COVID. <coughs> Actually, I'm still coughing as well. I'm haven't had COVID, but I'm still coughing. So bear with me if I do start coughing halfway through the session. Right, so 
as I get into the top price action setups today, you know, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the chat. I'll be happy to um, help you with any questions you have, whether it's in price action or if you have any other things that, you know, as we get into the charts later, if you want to have a look at any particular pairs, please let me know and I'll try to see how I can help you with that. <clears throat> so what to expect today? Um, as we said, you know, I'll be getting through the introduction of price action, how to use price action, what it actually means, um, in which situations do you look at price actions, uh, price action candlesticks, and then the autonomy of a candlestick, what it means, the characteristics, actually tells you a lot more than you anticipate when you look at a candlestick or the type of different candlesticks. Then <coughs> the top three, single candlestick patterns, top two, double candlestick patterns, and top three, triple candlestick setups, right? So just off, just before we get started further, what do you think is going to be a stronger candlestick setup? The single, the double, or the triple? Which is going to be something that's going to give you a better um, signal in terms of a trade? The single, the triple? Good stuff. So a lot of you have said triple. Um, it is the triple because it does take a little bit more time to set up, right? It depends actually on every time frame. Um, it does take a little bit more time to set up. <clears throat> um, it depends on how you trade as well. So my belief is that there's no one single method that will fit everyone, right? Everyone has a different risk profile. Everyone has a different style of trading. Um, everyone has a different capital and different attention span. So it all depends on you know, what kind of style you adopt when you're trading. So predominantly, it'll always be the triple candlestick patterns. But if you're looking at the smaller time frame, you know, scalping trades, you could be looking at a single because it could be something you get into quickly and get out quickly. But I would always suggest if you are new, relatively new or, you know, intermediate in terms of experience with your trades, then I would say stick to the um, larger time frames on H1, H4, or the daily time frame there. <coughs> so looking into price action, what to consider when you look at price action? <clears throat> One thing is that you know everyone looks tries to look at price action to tell them um, different things. How I look at it, many ways, or one of the main ways is to consider it only or mostly for a reversal or a continuation, right? So in a reversal, what it means is that <coughs> if you have, <coughs> oops, if you have a, say a support level there and you have price coming down, what I'll be looking for is a price action happening in that space, right? As price comes towards the support level, is there gonna be a price action to tell me <coughs> that it's likely to continue down or is it gonna show me a reversal or the move upwards. <coughs> and we always want to try and find that starting point, <clears throat> that starting point of whether we're looking to sell down from a resistance level now, or whether we're going to look to buy up from a support level, because that gives you that early entry, that point of a bit of an early entry, so that you can kind of maximize on your trade. If it does bounce off, you can have a good support level, a good stop loss level, a good take profit level towards the top. Or if it breaks lower, then you can look for that continuation towards the downside, a bounce towards the downside, right? So those are the ways I look at price action really for it, whether it's going to bounce off or whether it's going to <clears throat> break down from that um, support level or a resistance level. <clears throat> so when you look at price action, um, you don't look at so much the news, you don't think about, you know, you're looking at the charts predominantly, and that's what most traders get started with, right? Everyone who starts off trading very rarely looks at a fundamental news to start off with. Everyone downloads MT4, looks at the charts straight away, and tries to identify different um, patterns or price action, or they look at the candlesticks to try and tell them what's likely to happen moving forward. <clears throat> so, Candlesticks actually gives you a very good indication of how price is moving 
it gives you a sense of where the market is pushing the sentiment of the market in general right why it tells you that is because let's say for example here on the bullish candle <coughs> pardon me the bullish candle here starts off with an open price at a low point right it starts off at a open price at that point here and this could be on the h1 h4 one minute five minute 15 minute any time frame it works the same it starts off there and imagine this within let's say within the hour as it starts off we have <coughs> price pushing up it pushes up all the way towards this point there which is the high price the highest point it comes back down within the hour it comes all the way back down so these are the bears people who are selling it pushing price all the way back down towards the lowest point and then after that pushing it back all the way and at the end of the hour closing off at the close price that's how you get a bullish candle <coughs> and what that really shows you is that within that hour we've had buyers pushing price higher we've had sellers pushing price lower but eventually at the end of the whole session or within that at the end of that time frame the buyers won and we saw price close higher towards the upside that gives us a sentiment that hey price is pushing higher in the other scenarios for example a bullish candle you could see let's say you start at this point here and you could see a bullish candle like that right you can see price started off pushing higher downside and then pushing back up that's a strong push towards the upside or you can even see a bullish candle where there's no downside move at all you can see just that big push towards the upside so it started there and all we saw was within the hour <clears throat> price push higher that would mean that this candle here would mean that <clears throat> this oh, sorry this candle here would mean that it's a strong push towards the upside on the other hand if we looked at the bearish candle here price started there push down right you can't see push lower all the way down could push back up but eventually close at a low point again that flips the other way around it shows us that sellers were in control during that time frame the h1 or h4 or daily time frame price tested higher tested lower but eventually closed or tested lower tested higher and eventually closed below the open price so that shows us that overall there were more people selling towards the downside rather than people buying towards upside usually what this means is that we can see especially if this body is quite strong towards the downside we could anticipate that the next move is more likely lower than higher right any questions so far <clears throat> so as we look into the different candlesticks and we look into um, the way the candlesticks tells us a little bit about how price is likely to move or the different characteristics of the market how we use price action again remember i was telling you that we use it mostly for reversals at that support level is it going to continue down or is it going to bounce back up in this case here we've got an ascending triangle an ascending channel towards the upside We've got price hitting a support level here, <clears throat> bouncing off again, and then bouncing off again. Okay, I'll change that. Hang on, give me a second. <coughs> um, does, that, does that help? Is that better there, Gary? Good stuff. All right. So... So um, as we have it, we've got this bouncing off at this point, bouncing off again, and bouncing off again. <clears throat> and then now you would have, let's say in this a typical trading scenario, you would have this trade, like this price coming down quite strongly, right? You can see that it's coming down quite strongly. And it, as it comes close or approaches that support level, most of the time what traders will be thinking is, is this momentum going to push? And is it going to break that support level 
or is it going to hit? Oh, actually, most traders or you know retail traders will be thinking this momentum is so strong, it's going to come down, it's going to hit that support, and it's going to break. What we're going to do is to introduce this price action so that you would at this point consider whether it's going to hit that support. You know, using price action, whether it's going to tell you it's going to bounce off or whether it's going to break through. <coughs> right. So what we have here is a as it comes down, big strong momentum towards that support level. It hits there. And you can see that morning star formation. What does morning star formation tell you? I'll show you in a couple of slides later, but it tells you a potential for a reversal. All right, it tells you potential for reversal. You'd be looking at that point thinking, hey, can I look to buy as it bounces off? And you'd be looking to buy already because you've already seen it bounce off that support level once, twice, three times, four times, five times already. This is looking like a repeat towards the upside again. <clears throat> so there's one signal there or one price action there telling you a potential reversal towards the upside. And then you can see that that pushes <clears throat> up. Several things here telling you um, why that reversal was so strong or why that push towards upside was so strong. One is that trend, right? So I look at price action always together with trend and also support resistance lines levels. So that trend was towards upside. We saw that reversal of a support level, a support channel. Secondly, we saw this confluence level where it supported there, supported there, and it broke towards upside. So we have a reversal pattern here, a morning star reversal pattern. We have price breaking above a resistance level. And also we have another chart pattern, another candlestick pattern here, the three white soldiers. Can you see the three white soldiers there? Are you familiar with three white soldiers? If you can put it in the chat, let me know. Just so that I know, you know, are you, do you guys trade with price action? <clears throat> All right, so a couple of you are saying yes, a couple of said no. All right, so that's the three white soldiers there pushing price towards upside. So what I like, what I like about price action is it gives you that additional confidence, right? <clears throat> so conf so I got a question here about confluence. Confluence is when you have a few factors put together to actually tell you that story, right? I'll tell you more about three white soldiers later on into the few slides, but first confluence is when you have that few factors telling you a similar story where we have trend pushing higher, we have price breaking a resistance level, we have, price, we have price action showing a reversal. We have price action here pushing towards upside. <clears throat> Everything is pointing towards upside. Imagine if you are buying at that point or you have bought at that point and it pushes up and then you see price breaking a resistance. You feel more confident because it's breaking a resistance level. You say, hey, can, this is likely to continue that this could continue towards upside. And then you see a three candle pattern forming, giving you again more confidence as it breaks higher. You know, you got three factors there giving you that confidence to push or for price to push higher. Trading is all about confidence. As you build that um, confidence, you know, you hold on to that trade. This is how you, one of the ways that you would minimize the scenario where you close out that trade early you see the confluence, you build that confidence, you hold on to that trade towards that take profit level of the next resistance level. All right, so I'll use price action predominantly for reversal patterns there as it breaks, as it bounces off a support level or it breaks above a um, resistance level there. <clears throat> so using it as a breakout, right? You can see here again, this is a resistance level forming here. A resistance level again forming here. And then a resistance level forming here. So we're looking for a breakout towards the upside. You can see this is for one of you who's asking, sorry, I can't figure out how to pronounce your name, but what's a three white soldier? A three white soldier basically 
uh, in brief, I'll tell you now and we'll get into a bit more detail later, is where you see three upward candles. In this case, three green candles, one, second one up, third one. So three in a series towards the upside. That's what we call a three white soldier pushing towards upside, breaking above that resistance level. So what happens when you see that three white soldiers breaking above that resistance level? Not always to buy straight away, but you want to check, make sure that trend is towards the upside. <coughs> make sure it's breaking a resistance level. Make sure you see the completion of that chart pattern before you trigger a buying signal. You can see that three white soldiers towards the upside. And then what happens after that? You can see that push up, right? That push towards the upside. In this case, what you could be looking for You'd be looking at an entry there, right? I'll show you again. You could be looking at an entry at that level, at that level there, a stop loss just below that support level. And then your take profit will be at the next resistance level. In this case, we don't have a resistance level there. <clears throat> but in this, you know, you could have a resistance level there. That'd be a very good risk to reward trade as you see it break above a resistance level. <laughs> Make sense so far? Let me know if it makes sense to you so far. Big thumbs up. Super. <clears throat> right, so with that, let's get into the different candlestick patterns, starting off with the single candlestick patterns, the top three single stick candlestick patterns that I look at. First one is the hammer and the hangman, the hanging man, right? So you can see that Again, I would consider candlestick patterns when it comes with the, you know, considering the support resistance levels, considering the trend as well, not just the candlestick pattern. Because in a scenario, let's say that if price has been dropping, big downward move on price, and then you see a hammer happening there, your support level might be way down there. Would you be thinking, or would you be buying confidently, expecting it to push up? You know, most of the time, um, this move will not could happen, but will not be sustainable. It probably push up before turning back down again. What I would like for you to find is in a scenario where price has been going up, turn back down, and then you see it you see a hammer forming at a support level. Right, so it's been an uptrend towards the upside. It has a small retracement, and then you see price forming at a support level. Before, yep, yeah, it is also a pin bar. So I got a question there: Is it considered a pin bar? That is correct. <clears throat> um, this re this webinar is recorded, so it will be uploaded as well. So you can check back into the YouTube channel. I think Desmond shared that YouTube channel, so you can check back again and watch this. Even if you have, even if you are sitting through this session, <clears throat> always check back, watch it over and over again, just so that you refresh whatever we are sharing with you here. <clears throat> so again, back to this candlestick patterns, look for that upward trend, a test of the support. And if the hammer forms at the support level, that's going to give you the additional confidence that, hey, price has tested lower, failed to break lower, failed to close lower, and then push back up again, right? So I'll put that link in there. I'll just share with you that link again for the YouTube playlist. <clears throat> so that's the hammer pattern or the pin bar at the support level, indicating a possible reversal towards the upside. The hangman shows that price has tested lower, but then closed back up to indicate a potential reversal towards the downside. Now, actually, the, for those of you joining a session right now, <clears throat> put it into the, the chat, right? What do you think is a stronger signal of a reversal, the hammer or the hangman? Which is a stronger reversal of a, which is a stronger signal of a reversal, the hammer or the hangman? Hey, you guys know, you guys know your stuff, right? So the hammer is a stronger reversal signal because what it shows you is that 
price has actually tested lower but failed, right? Price has tested lower but failed before pushing back up again. Why the hanging man is not a not the preferred one or not stronger than the hammer is because it hasn't tested higher. It's actually tested lower. It showed that sellers were trying to push it down, right? But buyers actually push it back up and it closed at that point there, despite there being more sellers than buyers. So in this case, we haven't tested, we have tested extreme here. We haven't tested extreme here for the hanging man. So I would prefer the hammer. I'll give that three ticks compared to the hanging man, which I would say only two ticks in this case. All right, so good stuff there. Thanks for answering a question. The next single candlestick pattern it's actually the flip side of what we looked at um, here with the hammer and the hanging man. We're looking at the inverted hammer and a shooting star, right? So just inverse there. In this case, the inverted hammer showing you a test towards upside before closing at this point again. Then the shooting star, I would say, you know, look for that downward move, look for that rebound, and a shooting star occurring at a resistance level, then I would say that, hey, shooting star shows a great reversal pattern there, looking for further downside, looking to sell it down. So I'm not gonna make you put in the poll again, whether it's an inverted hammer or a shooting star. I hope that you can see here that <clears throat> the shooting star will be the preferred reversal pattern compared to the inverted hammer which only gets two ticks make sense so far all good all right good stuff so the last of the <clears throat> single candlestick patterns is the dragonfly doji and the gravestone doji all right very similar to the pin bars very similar to the hammer and the um was it the shooting star there you see that big downward move, you see price test lower, but then set right across, right? It set right across. Anticipation there is that it might not be a very strong signal because we haven't seen price close above, right? We haven't seen price close towards upside. Still deciding market is still deciding whether it's going to go higher or not. But the indecision, the indecision to show you that you know, they don't like moving lower. Price is not likely to move lower. It still tries to close higher. The likelihood is still that upside or that push towards the upside. Again, for that Gravestone Doji, the, the name gives it a little bit, gives it away a little bit. Gravestone Doji there tells you that it's been climbing up, tried to go higher, didn't like it within that time frame. set right across, the next move lower is the anticipated move, right? So <clears throat> all these single candlestick patterns does happen a little bit um, on one candlestick. So it can happen on a, you know, one minute M5, M15, M30, H1, H4 time frame. Let me just ask you again, which do you think will, should you be looking at on the single candlestick patterns? What time frame? Would you, should you be looking at um, for this single candlestick patterns? <clears throat> H4 in daily, I have a question, I've got to answer there. All right, um, so for me, I, I will look at candles, single candlestick patterns on the H4 or the H1 time frame. right? Um, I tend not to seek or not to look or to wait for a candlestick pattern to happen on a daily time frame because it takes too long. Sometimes it just takes too long. What I would rather do on a daily time frame is that I would be not waiting for it to happen, but if I see that happen, so let's say in this case, I see the day end off with a gravestone doji. So day one, day two, day three, the day four, and it closes off like that, then I would say maybe on the fifth day, I'll be looking for a downward move. Then I'll say, okay, that's a confirmation 
for me to sell it down rather than sitting there waiting for a candlestick pattern to happen because you know i'm pretty sure not a lot of you are sitting there trading full time or if you are trading full time it's a long time to wait for that daily candle to close so i would look at it on the h1 or on the h4 time frame for these candlestick patterns All right so good answer there so after the single candlestick patterns those are the top three let's look at the double candlestick patterns right and double candlestick patterns are quite straightforward we have the engulfing candles right the top two double candlestick patterns are the engulfing candles what it means is as the title suggests the new candle or the immediate candle engulfs or is greater than the previous candle right so you can see this candle this upward move is a bullish engulfing because it's an upward move right bullish engulfing candle towards upside is greater than the previous candle you can see by that much or the bearish engulfing candle that downward move engulfs the previous candle towards the downside now let me ask you a question if you had a small previous candle right so a candle like that let's say that's a bullish oh uh, well a bearish move towards the downside and then we have a big engulfing candle like that do you think that's a strong or a weak bullish engulfing candle strong or a weak bullish engulfing candle strong 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 all right so i like it when ash k says weak all right so i would consider okay maybe i didn't draw it perfectly i'll make this even smaller right i'll say if sometimes when the previous candle is red the previous red candle there um, is too small if it's too small and you have a big bullish engulfing candle there it's like david versus goliath right it's a big candle knocking out a small candle so it's actually quite easy to knock out a small candle quite easy to engulf a small downward candle so i would say that this wouldn't be considered a very strong bullish engulfing right what i want to see what i would like to see is for a let's say that's a downward candle right i would like to see that move a strong downward candle being engulfed by a stronger upward candle towards upside then you actually show that there was almost a fair fight it was a fair fight but the buyers won out through the two hours or through through the two candles then you can expect a good push towards the upside all right let me ask you another question here if you had let's say a bullish engulfing again so a downward candle this is red towards the downside and then you have a nice candle pushing higher Right, a nice bullish engulfing candle towards upside, but you've had big candles forming all before. So that was a push towards upside. Maybe you can say that there was another push towards upside there. We've had big candles forming, and then we've got a small bullish engulfing candle happening in this scenario here. What do you think is going to happen? Is that a strong signal or is that a bit of a weak signal towards upside? week good stuff thanks for that ashk so yeah so you guys got it right is when you look at candlestick patterns it's not just the one or two or three candlestick patterns but it's also the context of how it's occurring or when it's occurring in this case it's happening as you know with all that big push then we saw we see a small bullish engulfing it works but it's not going to be a very strong signal Right, so just be careful of that. Um, as I share with traders about how to trade, I'm very concerned if they start looking at bullish engulfing. If you start looking for it, you're spotted everywhere and you start jumping into trades. You want to be a bit more refined with when you're going to jump into a trade, you know, based on a pattern. Look at the trend, look at the context of the candles around it, look for that support or that resistance level as it wears when it happens. 
So look, next one of the double candlesticks is the tweezer bottoms and the tweezer tops. Very straightforward here. You can see that in this scenario, it tests lower and then it tests lower but close up. Again, I want to see this happen at a support level or for a tweezer top to happen at a resistance level to show a rejection of that downward move before closing back up again. A rejection of that upward move before closing back down again. These are very good, very good signals to show you a reversal, but it does need to happen at a support or a resistance level. Quite straightforward there. Any questions on the double candlestick patterns? All good. Then we move on to the triple candlestick patterns, right? So the top two triple candlestick patterns and triple candlestick patterns pretty much explains itself, pretty much um, describes itself, right? Why? It's because if you're sitting there and you're watching the price move on for three hours, you've seen it come down, hit that support level, and then on the third hour, close towards the upside, you know that you've seen price hit a support level, rejected that level and push higher. Quite straightforward. It's not so much because it is a morning star pattern or not so much because it's an evening star pattern. You can see price rejecting a level, pushing higher. You're going to anticipate a further move towards upside. Question just came in is which time frame do I want to see for double candlestick patterns? Again, for all my patterns, I would look at it on the H1 or H4 time frame. Um, the, long, the larger the time frame, the stronger it is. Right? So <clears throat> double candlestick patterns, I, from my experience, I've seen it happen or work quite well on H1. On the H4, it takes a little bit longer because you are waiting for eight hours for it to close off. Um, it happens quite nicely on H1 and, and also on H4. The bullish engulfing, you can actually use this on even the M15. So this will be one of the few, very few that I'll look at it below the H1 time frame. The bullish engulfing, you can look at it on the M15 time frame. But bear in mind, the smaller the time frame that you look at, right? The smaller the time frame you look at, your profit level, you want to consider them lower as well. You don't, you don't think, you wouldn't be thinking that on a M15 time frame, you're going to see price push um, very significantly. You're not going to see price push 100 pips, right? In an M15 time frame, you might be looking at price push maybe 30 to 40 to 50 pips towards upside um, or towards the downside. And the question is, do you trade them on the same time frame? You see this patterns or go lower? Always um, trade it on the same time frame that you see. For me, for me, what I'll do is I'll look at it on the same time frame. Um, I'll enter a trade based on what I see, right? So I wouldn't, because if you go down into smaller time frame, let's say you see a tweezer bottom happening on a H1 time frame, a tweezer bottom here happening on H1 time frame, and then you go down to the M15, it might actually show you a different pattern, right? It might show you a snapshot of what's happening there. Within that 15 minutes, it might look like it's turning towards the downside. Then you might get confused going, I just saw a tweezer bottom on H1, but it looks like it's coming down on the M15. Do I want to be buying or selling or do I want to wait a little bit longer? So I would always say, <clears throat> look for it on the time frame that you're entering and then get onto the trade based on that time frame that you see. Just so that when you check back, right, when you're looking at a trade, and then you know why you've entered the trade. You've entered the trade because of a tweezer bottom on the H1 time frame, for example. <coughs> Good questions there. Thank you for asking them. I really enjoy uh, seeing your questions. All right. So <clears throat> looking at the triple candlestick patterns here, we did the morning star. The evening star is that rejection of that resistance level. We see it push up hit that resistance level and turn down <coughs> another reversal pattern there. Right, so quite straightforward. Three hours, you can see it move up, hit a resistance and turn down. 
what I like, and like I promised one of you that we'll get into a bit more details on the three white soldiers. That's the push towards the upside. On the reversal for the downside is the three black crows turned down. Again, <coughs> look for this to happen at a resistance level or a support level. But even if you see, <coughs> even if you see this happening, you know, somewhat in the middle, even if it's not that near to a resistance or a support level, seeing three candles. Sorry, bear with me. <coughs> Seeing three candles push strongly towards the upside. One green candle, two green candle, three green candles. What do you think will happen next? <coughs> Let's say this happens on the H1 time frame. Yeah, if this happens on H1 time frame, we've seen that momentum has been pushing price towards the upside. You'll be anticipating that we're going to see price push higher because of momentum, because how how price has been moving right so <clears throat> again obviously if we see price pushing up small retrace back down towards support and then now we see a <coughs> three white soldiers pushing higher that's going to give us more confidence to push or to buy at that point for a continuation of all that reversal towards upside towards um, pushing higher Right, so any questions on the three white soldiers or the triple candlestick patterns <coughs> so far? Because in terms of slides, that's what I've had um, when you combine them, right? We're working with probabilities. Yes, we are. Training is all about probabilities. In your experience, how likely is it that price will continue expressed as a percentage? Um, well, how likely is price that will continue as a percent? It's okay. Um, it's hard to put a number, put, put a percentage number to it, right? Um, if you're looking at just a price action alone, if you just say, hey, I've got three white soldiers, I would say that I wouldn't, I would err on the side of caution and not give you a, a percentage number, but is about ticking boxes, right? So if I've got three white soldiers there, I would say, hey, I've got one thing pointing towards the upside. If I have trend pointing towards the upside, I've got two things telling me or looking like it's pushing higher. If I've got, so this is pattern, chart pattern there, right? I've got trend telling me to go higher. And then if I've got support resistance, if I have it bouncing off a support level pushing higher, then I would say that I've got three things pushing up. Um, then I would say that I've got a high chance of probability here. I would say it's quite high. If I don't have anything, I would say probability will be quite low there. <clears throat> then on the other hand, if you are just trading based on gut feel, then I would say probability will be very low because it's just a random guess or a gamble. All right, so I hope that answers your question there, Etienne. Um, this three black crows or three white soldiers, do they have to be of the same size? They don't have to be of the same size. Um, it's very hard to get candles um, forming up of the same size. So don't, don't sit there trying to form or trying to measure candles to be of the same size. The three white soldiers, three black crows are supposed to give you a sentiment of how markets are forming up. You're looking to see three green candles or three red candles forming to give you that sentiment of an upside push or momentum pushing it towards the upside or momentum pushing it towards the downside. So don't, don't start um, measuring candles. It's supposed to give you that overall feel. So Gary just asked is what's your trading hours each day? For me, I trade a lot, right? So I'm full-time trading. I look at the markets pretty much from moment I wake up to the moment to the moment I sleep uh, or just before the moment I sleep, I would say that I trade from 8, 9 a.m., 8, 9 a.m. all the way um, to about 8, 9 
p.m. and then well, no, to 7 p.m. Take a small break, and then I'm training from 9 p.m. all the way to to midnight or to 1 or 2 a.m. Um, because I look at markets, um, I'm looking at it all the time. I would say that for most retail traders, most of you are trading part time. So you know, probably set aside a couple of hours a day, and then uh, don't you know. Usually retail traders, I would suggest don't over, don't spend too much time in front of the charts because the more time you spend in front of a chart, the more likely you're going to expect uh, more trades and you start hammering out you know, trades because of the time you spent sitting there rather than because it's a good setup. So a little bit different. I, I would look at it at charts all the time, but for retail traders, set aside a fixed amount of time and then trade in that time frame, if you have a trade, great. If not, leave it for tomorrow. Look for another trade tomorrow. All right. I hope that answers your question there, Gary. <clears throat> so as we put it together, right, combining all the different uh, price action together, you can see here that we have trend. We have the trend, overall trend happening. <laughs> We've got that upward move. We've seen it come down, a retracement testing, coming back to test that resistance level, a pullback to test that resistance level. We've seen an Ichimoku cloud uh, there, um, just above price at that point. What it's telling you is that, hey, at this point, is it going to reverse, hit the resistance and turn back down? Or is it going to break above that resistance towards the upside? You can see here that we have a formation. <coughs> A rejection of that prior of that level. You can also see might have to squint a little bit, but you can also see a bully, a bearish engulfing candle towards the downside as it's hit and engulfs engulfs the previous candle towards the downside. And then we have short term or the new formation of a trend towards the downside. We have a rejection of a resistance level. We have the Ichimoku cloud there forming a resistance as well and that price action of the bearish engulfing towards the downside. <clears throat> so all that put together tells you, hey, we should be looking to sell it down, all right? In this case, you could be looking at a possible sell on that bearish, on that bearish engulfing, stop loss at that level there, take profit could be at that point there towards the downside, right? So, Again, I think someone asked a question about confluence. This is how we look at that confluence. We've got the downward move, rejection of that resistance level, that bearish engulfing, looking to sell down, great risk to reward towards the downside. Um, that's how we would set up using, combining trend support resistance and also price action. Enjoying your questions so far. If you've got any questions, please feel free to um, ask if you have any or reach out, right? Um, what I'll also do is to look into um, the next one, which is I want to share with you a little bit about the possible, some possible price action so i was looking at here uh do i provide training on ichimoku i'm pretty sure that there will be a session probably coming up maybe reach out send send out a um i'll take a note of these questions as well but send out a request i'm sure something can be arranged um, a copy of the slides you can catch the session again on youtube i'll put up the link again right so the session is there you can catch that but um, i'm not sure about the slides i'll check with desmond's whether you can get the slides out to you guys as well all right so looking at the price action i want to show you that all right so you can see a bit of a um, let me find it i was just looking at this before you can see that i like that as a rejection towards the downside Sure, um, Titus, you can catch out the session. You can catch watch the session on YouTube again. That'd be there. 
I'm starting out. You have live sessions on webinars where you help us place. Again, Desmond, check out the YouTube link. It's all there. So if I show you here the YouTube session, are you guys seeing the screen here on YouTube? Can you see the YouTube page? Um, let me just, yep. So you can check out the sessions here with how to do your support resistance lines, your stop loss levels, stop loss placements, uh, they're all there. All right. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Fernando. Um, gold, NASDAQ, and US 30. All right, so I want to find, I want to show you this first price action there. I was looking at that. Where was it? Okay, so I like this one. So this is one very good example here. This is the Kiwi dollar on H4 time frame. You can see that big push, right? If I put it, stop that support level there, you can see that engulfing candle towards the upside. You can see that test towards the downside before closing up again. That's a good reversal pattern <clears throat> there. Um, trade idea. Okay, so I'll look at gold. So I got a request for gold, NASDAQ, and US 30 first. So I'll do that. <laughs> Where's my gold chart? So XAU USD on H4. Um, right now for gold, it is sitting at the 1720 level. This is on H4 time frame. I would say that based on the way that you know back in the last week. The price has tested, and if I move this up, you can see <clears throat> based on the way it's tested that 1700 level. And you can see many tails towards the downside, many rejections back up again. Very clear signal that price doesn't like that to go below that 1700 level. Um, that's one reason why we saw that push towards the upside. Currently trading at 1720, I would say that. <clears throat> On H4 time frame, possibly wait out, see what happens there. Because if this does turn towards the downside, it closes red, there might be a signal towards um, a reversal of that upward move, might see that push towards the downside. So nothing on gold yet. I would say stay out, wait it out a little bit to see um, any possible trades or possible ideas there. US 30. I would say US 30 again, you can see that that's on an H4 time frame. Okay. Does that look a bit familiar to you all? What does that look like to you all? We saw that on the 15th last week. One, two, three green candles towards the upside. That's a three white soldiers. Fantastic, right? So that's the indication for potentially for the upside. Um, it approaches that resistance level of the 31,400 there. Now that it's broken higher, we could see that push towards the upside with that, especially with that formation of that three white um, soldiers towards the upside. Okay. Then I had a question on gold, no, on pound dollar. Oh, wait, NASDAQ as well. Okay, so you can see again, similar, very similar to the US 30 there, the three white soldiers pushing up. In this case, be extra careful because here we can see that price has reached a resistance level of 12,000, almost 12,150 and also very close towards 12,190 there. So I think that you know, not just considering the price action, you want to look at the trend and the support resistance. We've seen that upward move. Wait for it, wait it out a little bit, see what happens at this price level or this resistance level before deciding whether to, you know, again, look for that potential um, price action to possibly show you a rejection, the engulfing candle towards the downside, or some a bit like a tweezer top turning down. Let's see what happens here at this 
12,190 level. Is there any reversal chart, any reversal patterns that could be signaled at that reverse at that resistance level? <clears throat> Pound dollar. Pound dollar has been climbing very strongly there. You can see again that engulfing, that engulfing pattern pushing up, pushing towards upside. That's why we saw that big push again. At this point, push higher. No chart pattern at this point. Let's look at it on H1 time frame. Again, no chart patterns. Almost a three white soldier, but not. And then, so I think that we might see this push higher with the momentum. But again, remember that, coming back to the H4 time frame, remember that it's approaching that 1.20 resistance level there. <clears throat> or 1.2050 resistance level there. So it's coming close to a resistance level. Just be a bit careful. Um, let's look for any potential reversal patterns at those levels. <clears throat> All right, so I'll do two more. We're coming to our time. So I'll do two more and then we'll, if you have any questions, you know, send it in. We'll carry on from there or catch us in the next session. Um, WTI. US oil, again, see that big bullish. So it's actually been forming up very nicely. Um, we've seen price pushing higher because of all that engulfing candles forming at the key support level. So we see that push up. In this case, you can see that we look like we're forming the, th the third of the three white candles or the three white soldiers there. So you know, look for this to push towards the upside. <coughs> Um, do I do analysis on a daily basis? I do look at it on a daily basis. Um, every day I come in to check out my charts. I form my bias for the day. Uh, if anything forms up, then that's my daily view as well. So if nothing changes, then I'll continue with the analysis from the previous day. But every day I'll look at it to see any changes there. All right. So um, with that... I hope you had a good session. If you have any other questions, please feel free. Or please remember to sign up for the next session as well. We'll be going through that. If you have any, um, you know, missed any points, check out the YouTube channel, check out the YouTube videos. You can watch it over and over again to get some clarity on the information that we just shared with you through this session. Um, Okay, last three questions, last two questions or three questions. Three white soldiers, can any of the candle have a long upper wick? Um, it can, but if it's too long and, and it still closes green, then it can show you some upside potential. But we want to try and see good, strong bodies on the three white soldiers. And then um, with this indicators, do you not get analysis paralysis? So again, you know, I don't look at it just on the indicators or the price action alone. I look at it, you know, with the trend and support resistance predominantly. And also for me, I look at fundamentals first, then trend, then support resistance. So no, if you prioritize your analysis, very rarely do you get that analysis paralysis. I do try and make it easy for you guys. Um, it's I've been trading for more than... 10, almost 12 years now. So um, it does take experience and time, but I'm sure you get there if you stick with it. Watch the, watch the lessons, learn as much as you can, get experience and you know, ask questions as much as you can. We're always here to help you. With that, trade well, trade safe, and we'll see you at the next session. I hope you gain much. Take care now. Bye-bye.